Welcome to an Empower Peel video tutorial. We're going to be creating a Google form from scratch. As you can see, I'm already logged into my Google Drive account. If you're not, then go ahead and pause the video and <laughs> log into your Google Drive account so that you can get started uh, at the same part where I'm at now. Once you're logged in, over on the left-hand side, you'll notice that there's a big plus button where it says new. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And in the drop-down menu, you'll notice that one of your options is Google Forms. Go ahead and select that. And once you click on that, it's going to open up a new tab with a Google Form that is untitled. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is add a title to our form. And because this is a demo, I'm just going to call this Demo Google Form. Once I title it up here at the top left-hand side, when I click on Untitled Form there in the center of my page, you're going to see that it's going to automatically add that title because it's associating it with the title of the form itself. You can, of course, later go back and change this at any point if you decide you want to call it something different. You'll notice just below that, you can also add a description to your form if you'd like. And we're going to add something here just so that you can see what it's going to look like in the end. Once you have that, you're ready to start adding your questions. Now, obviously, you're going to do some prep work ahead of time in deciding what your Google Form is going to be about, what kinds of questions you're going to be asking, and so forth. For the purpose of this particular demo, we're going to do some really basic uh, question types. You can find the option to add questions up here at the top uh, right-hand side. It's got the little plus symbol. This is to be able to add a question. Now, by default, it gives you the first question, which just says untitled, and then option one, which doesn't have anything on it. But we're going to go ahead and start with this one and uh, title it. So we're going to say uh, main. So this is going to be a form example if I'm trying to collect information from my users, right? So I want their name. And you'll notice that it is pretty smart. The system will detect, OK, if you want name, probably need this to be a short answer question type. However, if the system doesn't get it right, you can certainly click on that drop down menu and be able to cha uh, change that to any other type of question option that you see here on the list. But this time it got it right, so we're going to leave it at short answer. Notice you can mark it as a required question or not. So this is totally up to you if any of your questions are more optional, or if you do want to make them required, you simply click on this uh, little button right here, and it'll activate it. Once it turns into a color, in this case it's purple, um, it'll let you know, OK, this is now a required question. If it is still in, in a, a white color with a, a gray background there, that lets you know it is not a required question. So we want to get that color to know this is now a required question. So name is the first uh, question type we're asking here in our form. Let's go ahead and add a second question. So I'm going to come over to the right-hand side, click on that plus button. And I want to do now um, a request an email. So I'm going to type in email. And over here, again, automatically, it said it's a short answer because obviously emails are short. So that's good to go. But I want to show you something extra here that has been really useful when creating uh, forms. So once again, we're going to make it required. And then we're going to go over to the three little dots where you're going to find some additional options like response validation. Because I'm asking for an email address, I want to make sure that people put in their full email address. Sometimes people will just put the first part of their email and they won't add that at symbol gmail.com or at and then their work.com, uh, you know, uh, that's the part of their email account. And so we want to make sure that they actually put in the whole thing. So I'm going to set up a what's called a response validation by selecting this here from the drop down menu. And you'll notice that it pulls up some additional features that I wasn't seeing before. For example, in my validation, is it a number? Well, in this case, no, it's an email. So I want to actually change that to text. And then contains, and here it does give me the option to say it contains an email address. So that means that if somebody were to answer this question and just put, Monica Martinez and not do the at gmail.com, then it wouldn't let them submit that question. And so it would stop them and they'd have to go back and correct it. And that's really nice because it forces people to have to look at their answer choices before they hit that submit button. Otherwise, you might end up with uh, a lot of emails that aren't correct or completed.
And of course you can uh, add custom text as a custom error message. So I could say something like needs to be like, and then I can put it in Monica at, uh, and let's just say gmail.com, right? So we just make up an email address that we're adding there, right? So this is gonna be the error message that pops up if they do it incorrectly. Okay, so we made it a required question. We're now gonna click on uh, the plus symbol. Uh, now you can select uh, other types of question types. You can continue to basically build your or form. So let's just say, uh, when is your birthday month? Or really, which is your birthday month? And let's go ahead and do, instead of an actual date, so you could ask for what is your birthday and then have them um, actually put their birthday in. You could also do which is your birthday month um, and do something like a, uh, a drop-down menu. Okay, so we're gonna select drop-down menu. And then from here, and I won't do all of them, but obviously you could do, you know, January, February, March, April, etc. And if you had these written down somewhere else, you can copy and paste and it will drop them all in there for you. So I'm just going to do a couple. So we've got January, February, March, April. Let's just do up to May. Okay. All right. So that's just to give you an idea. And we're going to make this one where it's not required because I do want to show you what they look like when it's not a required question. Let's add a couple more questions. So now we're going to do a multiple choice question. Uh, what is your favorite uh, flavor of ice cream? All right. So we might put vanilla, strawberry. Ooh, too many R's there. <laughs> I'm going to make myself hungry strawberry and then chocolate and then you could do other oh, let's go back there we misspelled chocolate what's going on okay there we go all right other allows people to actually fill in um, their own flavor in case you don't provide that within the multiple choice options and you'll see what that looks like here in a second let's make that one a required question and if you know that you're going to do similar types of questions that are also multiple choice questions that have three response choices plus other, I can easily just duplicate that um, question type so that I don't have to type everything all over again. Um, obviously, you're going to change the answer choices, but you don't have to make all the uh, different choices like it's a multiple choice. I want other. I want, you know, all that stuff. So we're going to click on duplicate and you're going to notice that it's automatically a required question. It automatically has other but I'm just gonna change up the question and the answer choices. So what is your favorite flavor of, well now maybe now I wanna say, um, um, let's say favorite uh, soft drink. And then you could come in here and change it. Uh, let's say um, Sprite. Um, we could do here and then other. Okay. All right. So you get the idea. Um, as you add more and more questions, remember, again, you have a lot of different options. We've just done short answer. You could obviously do a longer answer if you wanted to do paragraph type. Check boxes we haven't done yet. This allows the end user to select more than one option. So it doesn't have to just be only one response. So they can select multiple items. You can also do a file upload, which I'm gonna select. Um, not a lot of people knew about this because um, they haven't actually uh, done a file upload. Um, before, uh, because this was, oh gosh, it's been around for a little bit now, but it's somewhat new and new to certainly certain people. So the idea is that it lets your end user uh, be able to upload files. So let's say I'm uh, doing this as a request for submitting, let's say I belong as part of either your human resources or professional development department, and we want you to submit, um, let's say you, uh, your end users, your teachers, your educators have gone to a conference, you now want them to submit their certificate of attendance, for example. Or I could be a teacher and I'm asking my students to submit uh, maybe some projects and I want them to submit project files. Um, so files are gonna be uploaded from um, whoever's filling out this form. It has to be uploaded uh, from um, their Google Drive. So um, they'll go into their Google account, of course, you know, and then once they're, once they're there already, um, they're gonna be able to upload um, their files. So it'll let them attach basically. So here I can say attach your certificate. Okay. And then um, here where it says allow specific file types, you'll know like if, for example, 
we want PDFs of everybody's certificate, then you can certainly designate and say, I only want PDFs. Um, if you want to leave it completely open, then just don't turn this feature on. You can also designate the number of files they can upload and the maximum file size um, in case when you're getting these files, for example, you want students to upload their rendered version of a video. It's already a complete video and it's a link from YouTube, for example, versus the original file that's a working file on their computer that would be really, really large. This is another way to sort of trigger that um, response option to say like it won't allow it basically for the end user to upload if it's too large. So just a couple of quick tips on that. Again, you can say required or not required, um, depending on what you'd like to do there. All right, so back to the question options. So you saw again that uh, we've got lots of uh, really cool options. We haven't looked at every single one, but I'm just gonna glaze over some of these because they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, linear scale would be, you know, how great was this workshop? And you'd say five to one, and then five being the greatest, one being the least, right? We've seen those uh, a lot. Date would be a drop down menu that pulls up a little calendar, allowing you to select the date. And time obviously would be a little drop down menu that shows time options. So you can use uh, any of those there. So that gives you an idea. I'm going to go ahead and trash this one because we're not actually using that question. But you can see we've got quite a few questions already built in our form. Let's take a peek. So to look at your form as you're building it, you'll notice that there is a little eye icon up at the top right-hand side. This is your preview button, and if we click on that, it'll open up a new tab showing you what your form currently looks like. So that's where we're at um, with our form with some basic questions. So this is how you get started using Google Forms. I hope this has been helpful.